Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction House taking a look at some of the guns they're putting up for sale at the end of June 2015. And yesterday we took a look at a Dreissey needle rifle, and so today I want to take a look at its French counterpart, the 1866 Chassepot needle rifle. Now it's really interesting handling these two guns side by side, because you can really get this impression that the Dreissey is like the last of the muskets, just in general feel and handling and character. And the Chassepot is the first of the modern rifles. There are a number of elements to, the, to this that really are very familiar to anyone who's handled French rifles all the way up through the end of World War I even. Um, for example, the sight stayed pretty much the same. Um, the bolt, the feel, this just has the handling of a much more modern rifle than the Dreissey. Now, this was developed in 1866, and it is a needle rifle like the Dreissey, but it has a number of significant differences. First off, um, the Chaspeau has a set of rubber obturators, so those function to seal the bore so that gas only goes out the muzzle end and doesn't come back into the shooter's face. And it's not a perfect system, um, and it does wear out reasonably quickly. This is rubber we're talking about next to a, you know, a gunpowder firing chamber, um, but it does work. It also has some smaller technical improvements. Um, for example, the Dreissey cartridge, you have a bullet and a primer right at the base of the bullet and then all of your powder within a paper case. The Chaspeau cases, instead, they have a bullet at the front, powder in the middle, and they actually put the primer at the very back. So instead of the needle having to poke all the way through the entire powder charge to hit the primer, which is how it is on the Dreissey, on the Chaspeau, the needle only has to basically poke into the very back of the cartridge, and the first thing it runs into is the primer. Now, that needle still suffers from every firing, and it is, it is getting scorched and burned and, and damaged, and they do wear out over time, and they break as well, because they're very, very thin. They are, in fact, very much like needles. You'll, I'll show you in just a minute. But there's a lot less exposure in the Chaspeau system than there is in the Dreissey. Um, these rifles are also lighter. Uh, you know, the Dreissey is about an 11-pound rifle. The thing is heavy. That's heavier than a Garand. Um, the Chaspeau is much lighter. This also fires a smaller caliber, higher velocity projectile. The Chaspeau is about a 370 grain bullet traveling at about 1400 feet per second. It's 43 caliber or 11 millimeter. The Dreissey was a 53 caliber bullet and it was more like a 480 grain uh, projectile running at about 1000 feet per second. So the Chaspeau was higher velocity, it was, which gave it of course a bit less drop at range. It was also a more accurate gun. Um, this has a traditional projectile being normally rifled, hitting the rifling and spinning, compared to the Dreissey's um, Sabo system. Uh, there is one interesting quirk to the bolt here that you might not expect. So why don't I bring the, the camera back and let's take this apart and see how it works and uh, get a better feel for the gun. I do want to point out at first, this is a model of 1866. It was made at the Tula. Arsenal. I may have mispronounced that, and I apologize, but uh, it was, the French arsenals were all government owned and run. And this particular example was manufactured, as you can see here, in 1868. Now, these were manufactured from 1866, when they were first adopted, until 1875. And while the Dreissey was replaced by a completely different gun, the 1871 Mauser, the Chaspeau in, was actually, they started to convert these to uh, centerfire cartridge guns in 1874. That was called the Gras. It was the 1866-74 Gras. Now, the interesting thing about this bolt is after it's been fired, and it is currently in the fired state, normally you'd expect you'd just lift the bolt handle. Well, in this, the bolt's actually locked, and you have to manually cock the gun, like so. Then we can open the bolt. Once it's open, we get a look at the needle assembly. Now this particular one has seen a long and fairly hard life, so it's pretty worn inside. But uh, this punches into our paper case. This is the remnants, and this is very hard now, of a rubber obturator ring, actually two rings back to back. And our needle sticks out the front of this. Now because this, the bolt here, is in the cocked position, 
uh, there's spring tension on the firing pin or on the needle. We can't see the needle. Um, it's only when we pull the trigger and, and drop the cocking piece that the needle will protrude out. So let me go ahead and pull the bolt out and we can take a closer look at that. In order to take the bolt out, I need to remove this screw. All right. So this screw just runs in a track on the bolt. Pull the trigger. This track is what this screw runs in and just prevents the bolt from coming out the back of the rifle. All right, so here's our bolt. It is in the cocked position currently. In order to show you what it would look like fired, I can drop it like that. This is what it would look like fired. And there is our needle sticking out the nose of the bolt. So as you can see, that, that really is very much like a needle. They didn't name it that for nothing. Now this front assembly of the bolt will come out after you take out this screw. I'm not going to do that because this hard rubber obturator is in really poor shape and I don't want it to just fall apart on me if I take it out. So I will point out you can get new replacement obturators and needles. Um, I'm not sure if this needle is full length. Sometimes they, they do get worn down and sometimes the tips break off. So, well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like the Dreyse, there are actually a fair number of people out there who have gone to the trouble of figuring out how to properly recreate their own Chaspo ammo and actually shoot these guns. Um, there's nothing to say you can't go out and shoot something even though it is this old. This is about a 150 year old gun here. And you know what? I bet it'd be a lot of fun to shoot. Um, if you'd like to shoot this one yourself, or just add it to your collection as a cool piece of history, it is of course coming up for sale here at Rock Island. If you check out the link in the text description below, that'll take you to Rock Island's catalog page. This isn't a lot, it comes with a couple other guns, so you can take a look at them as well. And if you decide it's something worth having, you can place a bid right there online, win it, ship it to you, and have a lot of fun. Thanks for watching.